Hey, how you doing? My name is Ale. Welcome to this video. This video is sort of a movie review slash analysis slash just talking about the movie, okay? I'm not gonna put myself in a box. I was debating between doing like a non-spoilers video or a spoilers video, but there's so much to talk about. It's, uh, it's spoilers, I'm sorry, okay? Let's just get into it because there's so much to can talk about. These are the three sides, right? Like I said, we have Grindelwald who wants these things with the pure blood. We have Credence who just wants to know who he is, but he's like in the middle of this thing. He doesn't even know that Grindelwald is trying to use him. And then there's Dumbledore trying to stop Grindelwald, trying to save Credence, trying to, you know, be at peace with the ministry and like telling them like, can you guys like stop focusing on me? Can we just like focus on the problem? Ugh, this is always a problem with the government, right? And then of course Newt. Uh, our beloved main character in this series. I love Newt. I love Eddie Redmayne. I love how he uses the, the creatures. I love Newt's house. Oh my god! Can we talk about his basement full of creatures? And Bunty! Oh my god, Bunty is thirsty for Newt. I mean, can you... I mean, maybe you can take off the shirt too. Like, girl, come on! And also Newt, come on! Like, you, it's so obvious. That was a cool, like, little insight into Newt's life. And, and and all the creatures he has in his house and like how he cares for them and all of that. I love that. And of course the baby Nifflers. Can somebody please get me a baby Niffler because I need one in my life. They are so cute and I wish we could have seen more of them. I was confused because like I thought that when he went to Paris he was like, oh I'm taking the Nifflers. So I thought he was referring to the baby Nifflers but apparently he just took one Niffler. Like the normal size like adult Niffler <laughs> that we've seen already. Uh, I thought he was gonna use the babies more, but I guess, I guess not. I don't know. I don't know what happened. <laughs> Newt, it's on his mission that Dumbledore sends him trying to protect Credence, trying to get to him, but like also he's like, also Tina, right? So um, he's trying to find Tina as well. Um, I love how Jacob and Queenie just stumble into his house and they were like, oh, hello. And um, I love how like Jacob was so funny when he's like all with the love potion. And then Queenie, man, like, Okay, yes, I love Jacob and Queenie and I love, I love, I love their like dynamic and their conflict because like it's so tragic because I see both sides, you know, you can understand both sides like Queenie wants to get married, she just wants to be together, there's nothing wrong with it like being with a no match and then Jacob is all like, okay, but like I love you so much that I don't want to like just like that they send you to jail or, or something, you know, it's like so unfair that they have these like rules that they can't mingle or whatever. Um, and so I understand Queenie wanting to, you know, just do what she wants, man. Like be free to love who you love, you know? Queenie is trying to find Tina. She's just trying to do what she wants. She like get married and all of these things. And that's when she stumbles with Grindelwald. Queenie is such a like vibrant, bubbly character, like so happy and, and so lovable in the first movie that you're like instantly in love with her. So like you're with her there. It's a little bit heartbreaking how Grindelwald gets to her, manipulates her, and this this shows again Grindelwald's incredible power to persuade anybody. Like it does, you don't have to be like evil or like have bad intentions to like be easy to persuade by him. Like it's this is one of the things that is like it's 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 dangerous to just like just let the man speak because he's gonna twist it in a way that's gonna convince you and that's what happens with Queenie and of course he sees that he he basically gives her like paints the vision that she wants and he's like I just want you to be able to love who you want and to marry your nomad and so like join me and we'll make it happen and Queenie's like yeah because like Queenie's so like romantic and she, she just like wants to love Jacob and she just wants to do anything in her power to make that happen. <laughs> Every time like Queenie was crying or whatever or when she was like passing through the flames I was like no Queenie <laughs> no. So of course now I'm like super curious how that's gonna be like Queenie being on the dark side. I mean they gotta bring her back to the good side. Or I don't know what's gonna happen to her. Like what if she becomes this like Bellatrix like strange kind of companion to like Grindelwald or something. Of course he's gonna use her to like read minds and all of that. Like we see that that's the first thing she, he does when she's with him at the end of the movie. I like it. I like how Queen is, is on the dark side now and I wanna see what's gonna happen and how, you know, what's gonna happen if she's gonna come back, if she's gonna go further into the dark side. Is she gonna lose sight of why she's doing this? Like, what about Jacob? What? How is Jacob gonna react? All of this. 
I'm very curious. And Tina, she's doing her horror thing. And she's like, you know, I'm not like the other horrors that I'm just kill people. Like, I'm actually trying to, like, fix things in a good way, blah, blah, blah. And of course, she, like, read that thing in the article. This mistake that knew this is, like, engaged to, to Little Strange. And now Tina is like, okay, go with... <laughs> All of that misunderstanding, like, I think, in my opinion, they sort of, like, dragged it a little bit too much. They could have, like, resolved that. Like, you know, just get the words out and explain yourself. Like, it's a misunderstanding. Like, it happened almost, like, at the end of the movie. <laughs> when Tina was like, oh, wait, actually, you actually like me? Like, oh, okay. So, yeah, I feel like this is gonna be, like, a slow burn. This guy, Yusuf Kama, is so confusing to me because he kind of, like, came out of nowhere. He was there at the circus and then blah, 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 and then with Tina and then... I am so confused about the parasite that he had behind his eye. What exactly was that thing doing to him? He Did he know that he had it? Because he was like putting eye drops and did he have that on purpose? Did that thing was making him do anything? What was the point of that thing? I did not understand that parasite thing. Um, because, I mean, they took it off and he just kept on with his plan of like going after credence. Um, and then this is another like mystery thing that Tycho the Donis's predictions so they mentioned this a lot the ministry knows about these predictions they talk about it with D uh, Dumbledore Dumbledore is like yeah I know about the predictions um, but they kind of like push it away as if it's like it's, not, it's blah 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 Tina knows about it and she's like no that's just poetry it's not true so like what's up with the like it's confusing so here is the actual prediction here it is it's just like a four-line paragraph okay it's like a four-line poem kind of thing. This is what it says. A son cruelly banished, despair of the daughter, return, great avenger with wings from the water. That's what it says. So based on that prediction, Yusuf goes after Credence because he believes he's the one from this predictions thing. And then this is when we get the big reveal of the Lestrange, the little Lestrange tragic situation thing that she killed her brother, like Corvus Lestrange, all the, like, that was like a little bit like, oh yeah, by the way, there's this whole other shit going on, like behind the scenes, and I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. First Lita and, and Newt and Tina, they're all trying to get this uh, box that is actually like the Lestrange family tree, that they believe it's in the French ministry, but before we see that Grindelwald's minions, you know, they're, I don't remember their names, but they take this thing, they take it out of the French ministry and they move it to the Lestrange tomb, right? So everybody ends up in this tomb searching for this box because Newt and Tina think that the box is referring to Credence. So I'm like a little bit confused. So do they all think that Curvus Lestrange is this guy that they're talking about from the predictions? Lita is like keeping the secret all this time that she actually swapped the babies. The baby that drowned, which by the way, we all think that it's the Titanic. Is this confirmed? I don't know if it's confirmed, but it's like very telling that like, is this the Titanic? Like this whole boat situation. Apparently they were fleeing from, from Europe to America. They were fleeing from Europe to America. Lita's dad, this strange man, sent Lita with his son Corvus, which is the one that he loved, to America. And then in the boats, this whole trade happens and in the confusion Lita swaps the baby She grabs some other baby from another room Which happens to be Credence, right? At this point we're like, okay, he's Credence And then he, she swaps Corvus away And then in the boats, the boat where Corvus ended up being topples over and then Corvus drowns So Lita is like, okay, okay, my brother, great <laughs> um, And then this baby, which is Credence, ends up, you know, being taken to Bourbon so this whole like with wings from the water, it kind of makes sense because at the end, you know, we see that the phoenix comes to Credence and the big reveal at the end is that according to Grindelwald, Credence is actually Aurelius Dumbledore, Albus is Dumbledore, younger, youngest brother probably? So he says that it's Dumbledore's brother, right? And we see that this is actually sort of true because of the phoenix, right? Because he reveals the phoenix. Am I going... See, this is like... One thing is led, leads to another. And all of it is connected in such an intricate way that I'm like... Whoa. So that's why I'm like confused. So everything like stems 
from this like prediction but no but yes is credence the one from the prediction was Curvis the one from the prediction and then yusuf yusuf is just like it's kind of sad because he's he, he okay so they mentioned that he had the scars of an unbreakable vow which to me means that i i understood that the unbreak the unbreakable vow he made with his father to seek revenge towards lestrange for stealing the mom right and so the revenge is that he's gonna go and kill the son that lestrange loves which is curvous but and at this point all of his life he thinks that credence is this guy right but we get revealed by lira that is not and curvous was killed in he was drowned and so Yusuf's whole mission like couldn't be fulfilled because he was already dead so now what happens what happens with the unbreakable bow is he gonna die because he couldn't kill him or or has he been free from it this whole time because he already like he's already dead or does he have to be the one to kill Curvus in order for the unbreakable bow to like be fulfilled or whatever these are my questions because i just realized if it if this prediction is actually talking about credence not Curvus. it also makes sense if we take into consideration the theory that i've read and heard about that credence might actually be Ariana's son. So Ariana Dumbledore, the sister that got killed in this whole duel when they were like young, blah, blah, blah. There is a theory that she secretly somehow had a son, which can be Credence. That makes it so that Credence is actually a Dumbledore, which we know that he is because at the end of the movie, the Phoenix has come to him, just, just as Dumbledore said in the beginning. Because I imagine, if Ariana had this son, I'm sure there was some sort of secrecy. Maybe, uh, maybe Albus Dumbledore didn't know, but Aberforth, Aberforth knew about it, and maybe he like got rid of him, you know, because it was like too complicated or something. So that's the part where that son cruelly banished. He got rid of him. Despair of the daughter. Wait, is the timeline correct though? How old is Credence? No, but this is too. But he would. But I don't know if the if the ages match with this theory it makes sense that credence is is this guy because like he's you know he's mad about not having an identity and people just like throwing him around you know and it makes sense that wings from wings from the water because he did came from the water and then the wings part is the reference to the phoenix i don't know what do you think the rally starts happening in ours man like just the way the, the that speech that grindelwald gives is like it's very convincing, like he gives them the vision of the World War II He's like, this is your enemy, this is how he's manipulating all of these people He's like, we just want, like, we, we just should rule the world Like, we should just be free to do whatever we want And your ministry and these horrors are just killing us Just for wanting to be free And then they show it when this guy, like, kills this woman in the middle of the rally and he's like look he's killing us like, very, very good ours very good and then he's like okay go spread the word so now all of these people are gonna like spread the word and get more followers and then the blue flames this is another point that i'm like what is this this is another thing that i'm like i don't know because we haven't seen in the potterverse people being killed other than with the killing curse right they do seem to be like destroyed but i heard some theories that maybe they aren't dead maybe they maybe grindelwald send them somewhere you know um and and maybe there's a way for them to come back because i am not done with lita like i was so sad when lita died by the blue flames and like you know she did i mean that was cool that like she she, she was doing that she was confirmed Fronting Grindelwald to save the Scamanders because like Grindelwald was like about to kill them and she was like no 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 stop like look at me Sneaky sneaky how she just turns around to see both of them and she's like I love you Who are you talking to Lita? Do you love Newt or Theseus? What is going on? This whole like threesome thing like clearly Lita and Newt were a thing at Hogwarts or they were like flirting and stuff I want to know how she ended up with Theseus and is that why Newt and Theseus are like not okay with each other? Is it just because of Lita? Like I love how all through the end the Fantastic Beasts are there and of course my little Niffler went and stole the Kim Blood packed right out of Grindelwald's pockets. He is the best. Um, good job, Niffler. And his little paw was like, me, me, me. Oh, I love Niffler's bro.
So now Dumbledore has it and apparently he's gonna see if he can destroy it. That thing about like Credence being Dumbledore's brother, we know how Grindelwald is. He's manipulative and persuasive and not tells you the whole truth. He gives half truth, so it is true that he is a Dumbledore, I believe that, but I'm not sure he's actually his brother. You know what I'm saying? So there's a theory that it might be Ariana's son, which makes him his nephew? Uh-huh. I want to know what Credence is going to do now, because like, all right, now there you go, you have an answer. Let's say you believe Grindelwald completely and you're like, okay, I'm a really Dumbledore, what do I do now? So I, I think that Grindelwald is going to like, how is he going to persuade him to go after Dumbledore? Oh wait, I mean, he does tell him that he wants to kill him. Like he tells Credence that his brother is trying to kill him, like Dumbledore, which is not true. This is how he manipulates. So. Just because of that, Grindelwald is gonna be like, well, you try to kill me, now I'm gonna try to kill you, like... I mean, that's Grindelwald's plan, clearly. What's gonna happen to Grindelwald? I don't want him to die or anything either. Like, he's the best. He's a troubled child, okay? It's not his fault. The safe house in Paris is actually Nicolas Flamel's house. That's so cool that Jacob meets Nicolas Flamel. He's, he was like a funny character, but then at the end he was like... I'm not sure who he was talking to in the book. Was that Madame, the Madame President? Was that the... I didn't see see very well who I don't know if, if it was her or who was she and where's his wife isn't he supposed to have a wife is she already dead was the wife the one in the book remember when when the ministry including Theseus goes to visit Dumbledore to like ask him to fight for Grindelwald and he's like no I can't when they're leaving Theseus like stays behind and Dumbledore is like don't go to the rally like Grindelwald's gonna do a rally don't go like, if you trust me, like, don't do it. And of course, they don't listen to him! <laughs> and they go and then this happens and then Grindelwald uses the Aurors to convince further his people that he is in the right and the Ministry and the Aurors are in the wrong. So they should have listened to Dumbledore. Nobody learns. When they're in Lita's flashback at Hogwarts, I really liked how they showed the Gryffindors kind of like bullying Lita, you know, as Slytherin. And then how like Lita like is like friends with Newt, a Hufflepuff. Like I like that dynamic because in the in the Potter books it was always like Gryffindors with Gryffindors, Slytherins with Slytherins, Hufflepuffs, and like it's with their own house and the Gryffindors are good and the Slytherins are bad. Like now we're like, in, I like that in these movies they're like, no, it's not like that. Like it doesn't, you know, it doesn't matter. So there there are Gryffindors that were like bullying Lita the Strange. Like I like that they show that. And I'm a Gryffindor as you can see. One last thing that I wanted to talk about is Professor McGonagall. What? was that what was that okay we're very confused because apparently the age doesn't match uh people are like wondering is this mcgonagall's mother but i don't think so i think it's actually mcgonagall oh because okay yes they mentioned this so apparently mcgonagall in the books is a different age than McGonagall in the movies so apparently if we're going to McGonagall in the movies canon then it does match that that's very young McGonagall because I loved, I love this Mc okay if she is actually McGonagall which I believe she is I think it was a perfect casting because her voice was like on point that that was McGonagall's voice like unmistakable unless all the McGonagalls have the same voice uh, but yeah, that was absolutely her voice. In conclusion, I just, I love this movie. I love talking about it. There's so many things that like I'm wondering about, so many theories, so many things to unpack in the movie. Like I feel like the movie is like full of information and it's just dripping out and I'm just like trying to catch it and like grab it and paint it and, and make it into a thing. And I, this is, this is what I love the most about the Wizarding World and, 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 and J.K. Rowling stories, you know? Um, um, they're just so alive and so full of like information and things and, and mysteries and connections and I love I love analyzing and thinking about it and, and theorizing about it and I cannot wait for the next movie I cannot wait for all of the next movies um, I'm so happy that we are that we get to live this that we get to experience this uh, more of the wizarding world I'm so thankful and grateful that J.K. Rowling has given us this and that we get to talk about this 
way more for your skull. So yeah, I'm gonna end the video here. I hope it's not that confusing. I'm gonna try my best to make it as clear as possible. Um, but these are my thoughts. This is my review, my analysis, my questions and, and my theories and all of these. I would love to know what you think, okay? If you're a part of her, hey, high five. Let me know what house you're in and uh, let me know your thoughts uh, about the movie. It's okay if you hated it, it's okay if you loved it. Like, it's everybody has their own opinion, everybody be civil about it. I know there's like mixed feelings about this whole movie and this whole like series of Fantastic Beasts, but this is my opinion, this is my stance. I love it, I'm here for it, I am thirsty for it, I'm all the things for it. <laughs> and um, if you are too, hey, Let's talk about it in the comments. Thank you so much for subscribing. If you like the video, click that subscribe button because I'm trying to get to 1200 subscribers by the end of the year. Is it gonna be possible? I'm so close. Please help me. Thank you so much to everybody who subscribed already. You are the best. You make my dreams come true. Magic everywhere. This is a magical place. I would love for you to join this community and let's talk more about Harry Potter and other fandoms. Okay, I'm gonna go. Thanks for watching. Bye guys. I'm gonna go now. <laughs> Live my best life. My best of Gryffindor magical life. Do you like my Hufflepuff candle? It smells really nice. <laughs>